Over 300,000 people sat down to watch the official first set of matches of the Overwatch League. Now I don't know about you, but for a game that is supposedly dying, that is a pretty big number. I know that for people who don't like Overwatch and people who wish for the league to fail, all of this does not matter. Compare it to others and call it small, say it's a bad watching experience and claim that you know more things than the developers themselves. But what I want to talk about today is my own experience watching the Overwatch League. My perspective as someone who honestly was hard pressed to be excited. I'll talk about the positives as well as the negatives surrounding the Overwatch League and just the event itself as a watching experience. If you have not tuned in to watch for yourself then this is going to be a good video for you to find out if it is worth your time. If you have already done so and build your own opinion, hey maybe it's fun to compare and the accompanying discussions surrounding this subject might interest you anyway. Do note that I'm doing this purely anecdotally. I did not record any of the matches, I was just experiencing it as a viewer and not as a content creator. And I don't know if this kind of stuff gets me copyright strike or whatever, so I will be leaving a link down in the description below if you want to check out the VOD for these matches yourself because I'm too much of a chicken to use footage that ain't my own. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Let me put this out there first and foremost. The production quality was great. Most of the camera work was decent, albeit not perfect. The switches between caster and desk together with the replay and highlight system made for an overall pretty great watching experience. As we have seen in the World Cup, separating teams via different colors is a much needed aid that helps us figure out what even is going on and it makes it easier to follow the action. Again, nothing is perfect. There's a little bit of DPS bias going on with the camera work where every so often We'll see a DPS player who does, well, absolutely nothing while a tank or support is rocking the house and then we're left with but a replay. But hey, that's still better than nothing, I guess. And as we get to know the players and their strong points as teams, I'm sure that the people responsible for the camera work will also learn who is worth following at which point in time. Let us not forget that the Overwatch League is just getting started. When it comes to the matches, I want to focus specifically on the first day of play because despite their, hey, if you don't live in the US, then good luck watching pop policy, I decided to stay up to watch the whole thing till like 6.30 in the morning, something that I was not willing to do twice in a row. Well, at least that's what it says in the script. Evidently, I just rolled out of bed at 1 p.m., so I may have done it again. So how were the matches? One of the biggest problem was the skill disparity between teams in previous tournaments creating stomps over and over, which obviously is not a very fun thing to watch. Naturally, the first matches were kind of a warm-up, and I feel like they fulfilled their purpose as such. San Francisco Shock vs. LA Valiant may have been an 0-4, but the score does not tell the tale of the matches. Sure, Valiant became more dominant as the series went on, but it was still a great watching experience with awesome individual play and quite frankly, the best you can get when it comes to Overwatch Pro play. Shanghai Dragons vs LA Gladiators on the other hand, oh boy, these guys should rename themselves to LA Dragon Slayers. This was a stomp in the most true meaning of the word, in a video game sense at least. I do have to admit that I still enjoyed the match and therefore the sole reason that I did not have a team to root for beforehand. Seeing how much of a big mouth the Dragons had boasting about how they want to get top 3 and how good they are. Seeing the gladiators absolutely destroy them, no less with hydration on Doomfist was great fun. And these two matches successfully got me hyped for THE match of the night. And I mean THE match. The two best teams in the world clashed against each other at the end of day 1, Dallas Fuel vs Soul Dynasty. Dallas Fuel is the one team that I was rooting for out of the gate simply because the team is so approachable. I mean sure you could say they're essentially envious and friends, but their roster is just lovable. I mean, who doesn't like Seagull and Mickey and who does not know of XQC and Taimu? Personally, I just like every single player in this team for their own qualities. I love how approachable they are compared to many other league players and the fact that they have the skill to back up their reputation makes it even better. North America's best team consisting of solely one US American versus the best team in the world. If you have not watched it yourself, man, you're missing out. It Again, link in the description, go check out the VOD or go on Twitter. You will find a decent amount of highlight plays from each team respectively as well as from the official Overwatch League Twitter. This was one of the rare times where a match of professional Overwatch truly had me sit at the edge of my seat. There were so many highlight worthy plays it's actually insane and watching these matches makes me realize how much of a long way to go I have myself. And that's kind of the issue. Up until now I've been praising the league a whole bunch for how fun it was 
hours to watch and truth be told, watching soon and agilities pop off at me wanting to learn how to play Genji and Tracer myself. Spectating Shaz on Zen immediately woke up my urge of wanting to play competitively again. But then you get the very sobering thought of ladder play is nothing like pro play and it never will be. I mean granted the level of skill and coordination displayed by these teams is insane on its own, a team of randos in solo queue is never gonna be able to replicate that under any circumstances. And sure, you could always say that scrimming is the solution and so on and so forth, but it's just a damn shame that the game itself is so freaking frustrating. And that, I think, is the biggest up as well as downside of the Overwatch League. Previously I said, who cares about an eSport for a game when the game itself is littered with problems, and yet I really enjoyed myself watching, which I kinda feel like speaks for it just being a better watching experience than it previously was. But coming down crashing to the reality of what we have on ladder is just frustrating. Watching these guys play has me wanting to play too, but then I'm greeted with problem after problem. I hope that the greater implication for a possible success of the league means that there's a greater level of urgency to actually balance from the top down to make the game more competitive for us and, well, have it be esports ready. Now granted, a successful launch does not mean that they will retain that level of engagement, but I still think that a good start is, well, obviously a very good sign. As the league goes on, we're creating stories that make it even more memorable, creating fan favorites and more tension when old rivals clash. While those numbers may may be a result of their rather in-your-face kind of marketing, I still think that it was a cool experience and it has me wanting to watch more. And it makes me very sad that we don't really see any EU teams represented. At the end of the day, I honestly think that a success for the Overwatch League is a success for all of us in the competitive community. Once they get the ball rolling, we'll have a steady flow of pro play content to consume on a regular and maybe they then also realize that a successful esports scene begs for more competition on ladder. The the difference between ladder play and pro play should not be that fundamentally different. Yes, it always will be different, but it should not be like an entirely different game. I don't want the idea of competitive Overwatch to be limited to these tournaments. I want a glimpse of that in my own matches, and I hope that as they progress, they realize that and make changes to our experience on ladder to more closely resemble that. But hey, I'm gonna shut up for today, so let me know down in the comment section below, did you catch any of the matches? How did you like them? And if you did not, did this video convince you to check them out after all? I'd be really curious to find out what you guys think. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you wanna see more, and I hope to see you all next time.